So welcome back. We have finished looking at conceptual dependency theory. Then we looked at knowledge uh, structures like scripts and structures for goals and plans and actions and so on. Let us continue on the theme and look at this idea of frames which is a kind of a general idea which applies to that. So, this is just a recap of what we have said that we said that we knew something about scripts that if Anissa walked into a bookstore, we know what to expect. Okay, this is typically what happens in a bookstore essentially. So, what can you infer from this? And we saw that there are things like scripts uh, which work a sequence of uh, uh, conceptualizations. Uh, so, just to do a quick recap. So, for example, customer enters shop customer goes to shelves, customer inspects objects, customer moves object to the basket. Alternatively, the customer can ask go in this path and ask the shopkeeper that do you have this object or something. The shopkeeper replies and the customer goes back and maybe the shopkeeper gives directions and so on. If that uh, thing is not there, then the customer maybe exits from the shop. So, all these are expressed in conceptual dependency. We have seen that. And then maybe there is a payment uh, scene in that customer goes to the counter, gives cash to the shopkeeper or gives a card to the shopkeeper and then the shopkeeper gives a receipt to the customer and the customer has gone. So, we see that this kind of situational knowledge we could capture in scripts essentially. This is what we were talking about essentially. Now, Marvin Minsky who was in MIT, he also worked on this idea and he called such aggregations of knowledge as frames essentially. And he gave this generalized concept and that is what gave rise to object oriented programming systems. So, if you are programming in OOPS, then you should know that uh, you owe it to the idea of frames. So, scripts and frame allow us to represent abstraction hierarchies and aggregation hierarchies explicitly essentially, which means we represent the elements and we also represent the, the aggregations of those elements. We had looked at examples of these hierarchies, one is the abstraction hierarchy and the other is the aggregation or is part of hierarchy. So, abstraction is a, is a hierarchy and aggregation is, is part of hierarchy essentially. And we have seen an example of a bridge team which had six members and which formed three pairs and the three pairs formed one team and you could abstract away from them. So, they are a bridge team and so on. We had looked at semantic nets at some point and knowledge graphs which was to link concepts together with label edges to enable finding related elements quicker. We saw that the goal of semantic nets was to make things efficient. Frames, which is as I said espoused by Marvin Minsky is to take this physical proximity of statements one level closer to reify them into aggregations and in encapsulate them into what we now call as objects essentially, but objects and frames are the same thing. So, into one knowledge structure essentially and as we said this led to the idea of object oriented programming. There was also something similar being done at the Yale school at around that same time and they had this idea called memory organization packets which went beyond the notion of scripts essentially and let us have a quick look at that. So, there are according to Shank there were three kinds of hierarchies, one was the abstraction hierarchy which is like a taxonomy, one is the packaging hierarchy which kind of is captures the part of hierarchy and the third is indexing hierarchy which usually was the abstraction hierarchy because if you wanted to search for something, then you could follow those indices. So, for example, a visit that you are script, let us call it a script, a script for visiting could be either for visiting a friend or visiting a professional and professional for example, could be a lawyer or it could be a dentist. Then the aggregation hierarchy says 
that a professional visit is made up of four parts. You first make an appointment, then you go and wait in the waiting room, then you do whatever consultation you are doing, then you pay and you are done essentially. And that could be specialized again that if you are going to a lawyer, maybe you sign a contract, maybe if you are going to a dentist, maybe you have tooth extraction to be done. So, this was the idea of memory organization packets that emerged out of the Yale school. So, let us now look at frames. A frame is a data structure that encapsulates a number of attributes of an entity. It is like a script in that it packs related sentences together in one place. So, except that the representation here is closer to the triple representation that we talked about and less like a complex logical sentence. It is different from the script that its structure representation is a collection of attribute value or slot filler pairs rather than chains of conceptualizations. The slot in a frame is a named attribute. The filler can be anything and it can also be another frame essentially. It is also different from scripts because there are explicit links to other frames. So, in that sense, it is more like a, it also captures the flavor of semantic networks, which capture both abstraction and aggregation hierarchies as we will see. And in that sense, it is closer to the memory organization pa packets that we just saw. It is also like a set of triples organized together under one subject. So, you have the subject and then you have a set of triples. We saw this idea even when we were looking at uh, RDF that you could have a representation in which the subject followed by many properties and many values essentially. So, it is closer to that. Though it is not designed for the net, the RDF was explicitly designed for representing information on the world wide web. The structure of the frame mirrors the structure of the objects that they represent and the basis for object oriented programming as we have said a few times. So, a frame is represented as a structure which has a frame name, it has a set of slot names followed by a set of fillers essentially. They may be generic frames or individual frames. Generic frames are like T box representations, which basically are not talking about specific individuals. They represent a frame type or a class or something. Individual frames are like A box representations. They talk about individuals and they are instances of generic frames especially. They are also like the working memory elements that we saw when we looked at rule based systems. Remember that working memory elements had a similar structure. So, it has a class name, attribute value, attribute value, attribute value and so on. The slots in frame can be of different types essentially. They may have procedures attached to them. So, for example, as we will see this thing, there might be an if needed procedure, which means if you need a value of this attribute, then run this procedure essentially. Or it could be if added, that if you are adding a value for this slot, then also do something else. Slots can have nominal values. So, for example, age in years or they can be pointers to other frames. So, for example, the odor is an individual Socrates. So, one of the things we are interested in is in aggregation because we are putting together things into one this thing. A frame can organize information into a packaging or an aggregation hierarchy essentially. There are no special keywords slots like has part, but we will see that for abstraction hierarchies they have keywords. The value of a slot may be a pointer 
to a sub part of the frame which could have a part of slot inside it essentially. So, for example, if you want to construct a frame for a petrol car, then you would have this following components that you would have this power train, you would have the chassis system, you would have the steering systems, you would have the uh, wheels and the gearbox and all those things. And the power train itself may have power, it may be a power system, it is part of this petrol car that we are talking about. It has an engine, a transmission and a drive shaft for example. So, this shows that the value of a slot is a pointer to another frame which itself is a frame. Now, typically when individual elements come together to form a larger entity, there is always some hierarchy and aggregation happens naturally. So, uh, if you look at ant colonies for example, they behave like a higher level organization or organism. Uh, if you look at our own bodies then you know we are made up of so many different parts that eventually we are aggregated into what we think of as a person essentially or you know an entity or a uh, man or a cat or a deer as the case may be. Even collections of animals can behave like organisms themselves. So, you might have seen uh, uh, videos of you know starlings all moving together as if it is one organization. Whenever the aggregate or the higher level organism acquires a sense of agency, then aggregation is natural and most life forms have some simple hierarchies built into them. Humans are of course, over organized in many ways. Uh, we have political structures, so we have countries, states, cities, villages, families and so on. Each of them have their own governing structures. We can be broken down into geographies, so continents, countries, cities, town, villages which are physical in nature or we also have organizations like in the corporate world or in the government where we have divisions, units, design, manufacturing, marketing and so on. So, aggregation is a part of life is what you should take home. So, here is an example of a frame. Uh, it is about this individual called Ted and it says that Ted is an instance of a dog and its owner is Socrates. So, this instance of is a keyword that we can use in frames and the value of dog is a pointer to another frame. So, instance of points to another frame whose which is a generic frame. So, generic frames I am drawing in, in grey, individual frames uh, have no shading. So, dog is a mammal, it may have other values stored with that, but that is not of interest to us. But essentially we have these two kind of keywords is a an instance of. Conventionally, generic frames would be written in capital letters and individual frames would be written in lower case letters. Then we can have other kinds of links. So, for example, owner is Socrates and Socrates points to a frame for the individual Socrates who is an in instance of a human essentially. Okay. So, this is the human. The human is a mammal. So, there is another edge going from human to mammal and you can see that we have the superclass subclass relationship in a frame system. The other kind of hierarchy we are interested in is the abstraction hierarchy. 
abstraction hierarchy in frames is implemented by two special kind of slots as we have just seen one is called an is a slot and the other is called an instance of slot the is a slot relates a generic frame to a super class an instance of slot relates an individual frame to a generic frame these are all handcrafted so frame systems are basically you can say you write software to implement frames that means that it allows you to say that this is these are the slots these are the values these are the fillers and so on and these are all handcrafted unlike in description logics where they emerge naturally out of the logical relations so i will describe that very quickly before moving on but in both the cases where we work with uh, abstractions we have this uh, hierarchy of of class subclass relationship it can be either handcrafted or it can emerge from the description that description logic allows you to make essentially in frames because they are handcrafted there is nothing to stop one from saying that a whale is a large fish i mean many people might say that uh and you can also say that the uh, whale is a mammal at the same time in the same breath in some sense even though a biologist would frown upon this idea because for in biology fish and mammals are disjoint classes but nothing stops you from saying that in frames when constructing frames so a frame like a concept in description logic can be a subclass of two two separate frames we will look at the consistency issues that if you are a subclass of two separate frames can there be issues of consistency we will look at that and we will see that if there is conflict how to resolve that essentially so uh, we'll take a break here and when we come back we will look at to this part as to how the abstraction hierarchy emerges naturally out of description logic